my wrestling and in my doubts In my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea Silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my to show Welcome to this service of worship. I'm Randy Williams, the minister at Glen Oak Christian, and we're just delighted to have you join us in this way. You might want to pause your video just now and get your elements, your bread, and your cup ready so that later on when we share in communion, you'll be able to participate. Uh, it's a delight to have you uh, be part of this service. Thank you. I am so blessed to be part of a congregation where the words but we've never done it that way before, are rarely ever heard. And it's because of our willingness to let the Spirit guide us in ever new and ever evolving ways that I'm so excited about the future of Glen Oak Christian Church. Do we know exactly what that future looks like? No. Do we believe that we can play an important role in the revitalization and transformation of our beloved East Bluff neighborhood? Yes. God has always had a plan for us on the corner of Atlantic and Republic, and I can't wait to see what's next. Oh uh -huh. 
Pray with me, please. On this cold, wintry day, Lord, as we kind of snuggle into ourselves, seeking to be warm in body and spirit, as we do that, there's a sense of, of need that comes over us, a, a physical need of wanting to be warm. And that need is, is kind of symbolic of of how we need you. We need you to come into our lives all the more boldly and to give us all the more encouragement and to help us feel warm spiritually and emotionally. Help us in all ways to know that you're present and that even when we are by ourselves, we're never alone. Lord, we pray your divine blessings on our country. We need you. Just now as the impeachment trials are underway and all the issues that are being laid out before us as, as signs of our division, we pray that you bring us together with signs of unity. Help us to see how we always have more in common than we have dissimilar. Help us to see how we have you in common and may your divine spirit empower all of us to live with new joy and new hope. How the Jewish community is under attack in so many ways and yet you are the God of the Jews and that you're the God of the Muslims and you're the God of the Christian faith. All of us are seeking to follow you in our own unique ways, yes, but all following you listening to your voice, hearing what you have to say to us. Be our God and help us see how we are all your children. Encourage us just now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Then God said, let us make man in our own image in our own likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Man and female, he created them. 
God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in numbers. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. today because I wanted to talk to you about our scripture 
and what it means by saying that God made us in his image. Let me reread a verse of the scripture from this morning, from Genesis. Then God said, let us make humans in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created humans in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So the Bible tells us that God created us in his image and in his likeness. If I look in the mirror, I can see my image, can't I? I can see my face. I can see what I look like. Just like you can see yourself when you look in your mirror. So what does it mean for us to be made in God's image? When I look in my mirror, I see light skin, green eyes, kind of reddish hair. So does that mean that that's what God looks like? You think God has red hair and green eyes? You know, there's a beautiful song called Some Children See Him that talks about different ways that children see God. Some children see him lily white with tresses, hair, soft and fair. Some children see him bronzed and browned with dark and heavy hair. Some children see him almond eyes and skin of yellow hue. Some children see him dark as they and oh, they love him too. The children in each different place will see his face like theirs, but bright with heavenly grace. So, I think what it means when God says he created us in his image is that he wants us to be like him. I think he's, it's talking about God's heart and how he wants our hearts to be. He wants to see us as loving, compassionate, kind, helpful, generous, thoughtful, all those things. So that when God looks at us, he can see himself in us. He wants to look at us and see us acting like him. Then he'll say, yes, I can see myself in Simone and Demia and Ariana, and Tiana, and I can see myself in Anaya, and Torica, and Ja, and Stormy, and Randy, and I can see myself in Debbie, and Hannah, and Megan, and Ernest, and Catherine. I can see myself in everybody. It will be like God is looking in a mirror because we're acting just like he does. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, Thank you for making us to be just like you. Help us to act more like you every day so that you can see yourself in us. Amen. Have a wonderful day and smile. God loves you. Bye-bye. Did you ever feel like there was communication going on that you weren't part of it? That... Um, it would be like the radio was broadcasting a signal and other people were tuned in and listening, but you weren't on the right channel. Uh, when I was a kid growing up, my, my sister was 18 years older than me. She's still 18 years older than me. That hasn't changed. But when I was a kid, she and my mother would talk about things because my mother and sister both had babies together. I was an uncle at five months. I went to kindergarten with my niece. And there were things that my mother would talk to me about that uh, were mine to hear, but there were things that she would talk to my sister about that I wasn't old enough to hear. It wasn't appropriate for me to hear. I was a child. My sister was an adult. 
Uh, that kind of communication happens. Uh, sometimes we talk in business parlance about insider information. When a, a company, ha the insider has certain information and they, they make stock trades and, and all based on that information, sometimes that can happen legally. Most often you end up with problems. Depends on exactly all the details. But that's insider information. When Linda and I were raising kids, we had our own communication signals. And sometimes when we were dealing with the kids, one of the things that we'd say to each other is, oh, you know, we need to go to the office. Which meant that Linda and I were going to leave the situation we were in and go have a conversation, a conversation that the kids weren't privy to. Uh, so what, what going to the office meant uh, was that we stopped where we were, left the kids, went to the, to the bathroom, closed the door, turned on the water and the fan, made as much noise as we could that way so the kids couldn't hear our discussions, but we wanted to come back to the kids as a unified front. We wanted to be together in disciplining rather than to be separate. And so that's what we did. That was our communication. Now, I'm not sure that the kids couldn't ferret out what we were saying by putting those ears against the door, but it was a good effort. It was a good effort at Linda and, and I being together, the two of us um, being co-parents together for our children. The insider information happens in all kinds of things. Uh, Clubs, organizations have special secret passwords, have handshakes, uh, gangs have gestures and signs that they can communicate to each other. Are you in or are you out? Are you there? Are you, what's going on? How, that, insider information, communication. Well, what's not always clear when we read the Bible is that there's a lot of insider information we don't get unless we look at the whole Bible. There's things that are said in one way here and a different way there, and that to have those two things in dialogue, we need to read both of them. We need to know about both of them. Uh, Deuteronomy is the passage that I've been spending a lot of time on lately, and the author of this new book that I'm working through the author is, is really pushing to say that you cannot be within the circle of hearing Deuteronomy. You can't hear what Deuteronomy is saying to you unless you see the overarching story. And so one of the things that this author does is he goes back to Genesis and he's telling you what happens in Genesis and how that, that has impacts for, for what's said in Deuteronomy. And one of the passages that he picks up is this passage. Let me just read to you what uh, Dr. Uh, M. Eugene Moore has written here. He says, if one opens the Bible to the first page and begins looking for the first commandment God gives to human beings, it's already there in the first chapter. Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. That's the passage that's before us today. This commandment was given to all humanity, uh, Adam equals man, humankind, um, Eve equals mother of all living. And then he gives scripture references to that. This command was given in the Garden of Eden before anything had gone wrong. Before there was an Israel or a church, God addressed it to all human beings in the world. They were God's people for God had created them and blessed them. The first commandment is based on the gift of life and the blessing of humanity, already given unconditionally, before any be human being had heard a single command. Ever after, God's command is preceded by and issues from God's grace. Adam and Eve belong to the newly minted creation, pronounced good six times before the climactic God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. The first commandment came directly from God, our primal parents, humanity, and mother of all life. Didn't get it from a book or from a church or a preacher. The first commandment was not a thou shalt not. It was 
against, it was not against anything, but a positive, upbeat command dealing with the most intimate of human relationships and with the ultimate purpose of the Creator. God had created human beings because God is love. Wanted people, children, he could love and who could respond to love. God wanted relationship with other loving beings. Didn't want to dwell in eternal solitude. God did not want to be God without us. That's what he says. I, I just find that so strong. And, and part of the, the notion of creation was to create human beings so that they could go and help fulfill God's purpose in the world, which was to subdue chaos and make the world all part of uh, relationship, connected, belonging to God. And now, we've struggled with that, haven't we? We've had all kinds of issues. That's, that's from the story of, in Genesis. But to hear who we are, to know who, who we are and what we're about, we have to know the whole story. We have to know the whole story from Genesis to Revelation. We have to be part of that. We have to see ourselves within that context of faith. And I think that there's a lot that we often miss People that are uh, agnostic, uh, people that are atheists, who haven't who haven't read the whole, haven't heard the whole, don't haven't had the insight of some some to help us move within instead of being on the outside looking in and being on the outside and judging what's going on there, but to be within the inside and to hear. Um, The more that I study the Bible, the stronger it gets for me in my connectedness to Jesus, my connectedness through Jesus to God, my connectedness to you. The more that I study the Bible, the more I sense belonging connection, hope, have courage, because God created you in love. Amen. Good morning. I'm feeling especially joyful this morning. First, to be with you all this morning. And second, because I'm so excited about Glen Oak and our future together. It's a tough time right now not being able to actually be together and see each other and worship our Lord and Savior together in the sanctuary at Glen Oak. But I think if we just hold on a little bit longer, we'll be there soon. I want to talk about joy this morning a little bit. Sarah Young, in a book called Jesus Calling, talks about joy. She talks about a number of different attributes and gifts that we have from the Lord. But this particular one this morning addresses joy. It says that God gives us joy independent of circumstances. We get it from God. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in him. He is infinitely wise and all-knowing, and we will never run out of treasures to search for. He is a wellspring of joy, eager to overflow into our lives. Open our hearts wide, our minds, our spirits, and we can receive him in full measure. His joy is not of this world. It can coexist in the most difficult circumstances. And I know that many of us have had difficult circumstances this year. No matter what is happening in our life, the light of his presence continues to shine upon us. Look to him with a trusting heart. If you persist in searching for him, his joy and light can break through the darkest storm clouds. 
we need to remember that we have an inheritance in heaven. It can never perish, never spoil, and never fade. And since we believe, glorious joy is ours, now and forever. Will you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, thank you for the many treasures that we have in and through you. Lord, pour into our lives your essence, your joy, everything that you have for us, Lord, let us accept. And then let us turn that to other people. Let us love others in and outside of our church building. Lord, we're excited for the plans of getting back together in our sanctuary and sharing time worshiping you. As we bring our offerings to you this morning, Lord, let it move forward the mission that you have for Glen Oak as a beacon of light and hope on the East Bluff. In your son's precious name we pray, amen. As always, you can make a donation to Glen Oak Church by sending it in through the mail to our church building, or you can go to the church website at www.glenoakchristianchurch.org, excuse me, glenoakchurch.org, and on the Donate tab, you can make your donation there. Blessings to you today. An author that I'm reading through their material just now uh, wants to differentiate between people out in the world who don't know God and those people within the circle of faith, those within the circle of hearing, those within the certain understanding. And so to differentiate between these two groups, since all are created by God, whether they know it or not, he refers to them as, as God's people, and then when they make a, a decision, when they come to understand they're, they're in the community, when a person is baptized into Jesus, uh, moved within the community of the Jewish faith, or uh, becomes Islamic, that those, at those points, those decision points in their life, they move from being God's people to being the people of God, seeking to follow. Within the Christian church, we exercise what it means to be within the know, insider information, the kind of thing we've been talking about in the sermon. That information that we have doesn't make us special, but it gives us special knowledge that we want to share with others. And this meal is a meal that reminds us of that. For every week when we worship, we have a time of sharing that's called communion, the Lord's Supper. Sometimes we refer to it as the Last Supper. It was when Jesus was with his disciples in the upper room that he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and he said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. In the same way also, at the close of the supper, he took the cup. And he gave thanksgiving and he declared, this is the new covenant of my blood. Drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat the bread and drink from the cup, we proclaim the Lord Jesus until he comes anew. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord of heaven and earth, thank you. 
Thank you for our many blessings. Praise be to you, God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you and thank you humbly for the sacrifice and his death on the cross, his broken body and shed blood for the forgiveness of our sins, Lord. We can't imagine the sacrifice that you've made for us. Lord, in your great mercy, you have given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus and an inheritance to heaven. Though we do not see you, we love you, Lord. And even though we do not see your son now, we believe in him and are filled with joy and awe. Bless us this day, Lord. In your son's precious name we pray. Amen. As this worship service is coming to a close, I want to remind you that we have a special event in the life of Glen Oak tonight at 6 o'clock on Sunday night, February 21st. There will be a Zoom uh, celebration. We'll be getting together and, and talking about the capital campaign, and, and hopefully you'll be part of that. Hopefully you've uh, RSVP'd and gotten your... Uh, party bag for the party that we're going to have. But I want to remind you about that and encourage you and, and seek out that link uh, on that Zoom gathering. Uh, it's in the last uh, edition of the Bells. But we want you there. We want you there if at all possible. And uh, where, whether you're part of Glen Oak or part of this fellowship and the part of the Zoom party tonight and the capital campaign and all that, please know that whoever you are, wherever you are, that you were made by God, that God loved you before you were born. God has loved you all the days of your life. God has a plan and a hope for you. Be encouraged now and always. Amen. On a journey together